Hey guys, it's Bear. It is Friday, January 15th, 2016. Uh, this is Life of t -Man. And this week's topic is the military. Um, I will warn you right away that this is probably going to be a long video. Uh, I've got a lot to say on this topic. And in fact, I've been anticipating this video and doing research for it for the last couple weeks. I could easily make like a series of videos on this topic. Um, from from different angles and uh, talking about different you know my different feelings on it and stuff like that um, Matt already talked about you know the tendency for transgender individuals to sign up for the military for different reasons so I won't go into that I'll talk more about my personal feelings and uh, you know some some policy changes that are going to be coming up for for the United States military so as far as my personal feelings go you know I'm an incredibly patriotic United States citizen. I love my country and I, I strongly support the people who go out and dedicate their lives and sacrifice their lives in many different ways to defend my country. Um, I probably have wanted to be in the military like all my life. Uh, again, reflecting on this topic, you start to think about you know, uh, things that you uh, used to do and stuff, and I realized, like, we used to do, like, neighborhood wars and stuff, and, like, put together little armies, and um, when other little girls were playing dress-up, I was dressing up with friends, you know, um, and playing, like, soldier and playing, like, sailor and stuff. I had a cousin who was in the Navy, um, so I had, you know, stuff. And, um, yeah, it's something that you realize looking back that there's always been a, a real fascination there. I talked to a recruiter when I was like 17 years old when I was finishing up high school. I knew my chances of getting into college were pretty low and so I was really interested in going into the military then. Uh, I was going to go into the army. I ended up not doing it for a variety of reasons, you know, when you're 17, 18 years old life just, you know, changes. Um, I'm not going to get into the reasons I didn't go ahead and enlist at that time. But then moving forward, you know, after like 9-11, I considered it again, you know, um, and thought it was the right thing to do at that time. Except by then, I was already starting to feel really conflicted about not just my sexual orientation, but also my gender identity. And I did not want to go into the military as a female at that point in my life. That would have been a really difficult thing for me to go through uh, because I knew then, you know, I, again, I didn't know a word for it yet, but I knew then already that I wasn't a typical female. And so I didn't want to be a woman in the military. So uh, instead, you know, I've just kind of had to sit back and be fascinated by the military and the people that go into it. Um, <laughs> probably have um, a little bit too much of a, a camouflage collection as far as clothing and stuff goes, you know, military wardrobe and stuff like that. Um, more because I, you know, I, I want to honor it, you know, and I, I think it's cool and I wish I had done it, you know. Uh, but in the meantime, I found uh, this this thing called GORUCK, which I'll, I'll put a link to. Um, it's like military training and, and team building for civilians. It's run by special forces um, veterans. And I've been fairly active with that for the last couple of years. And, um, and that's a lot of fun. So I've been able to kind of scratch the itch that way. Um, yeah, so that's that's like my personal feelings on the military, and I wish that I had pursued it when I was younger. I don't think I would have been very successful at it, so, you know, it's just something that I've always been really, like, fascinated with and that I've followed quite closely. So, as far as, you know, the military's policy on LGBT individuals, um... There was a kind of a blanket ban on serving openly as any of that spectrum for a long time. The ban on uh, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was lifted, I think, in 2010. I'm actually not sure. Um, but I know it's been several years. But that was only lifted as far as um, the different sexual orientations. 
um, serving openly, so like being gay, lesbian, bisexual, and so forth, they could serve openly, but the ban on trans individuals was not lifted at that time. Um, and you could still be separated from the service. Um, from the research I've done, that's because uh, being transsexual uh, is kind of considered, like, has been considered a medical condition, and that's true across the board, you know, it was considered, um, a medical, um, psychological condition up until fairly recently when we discovered it was, it really isn't, um, and it used to be called gender identity disorder, so it was a disorder, um, which means, you know, just like many other disorders, you wouldn't be eligible for the service. So um, now as we're doing more research and stuff, we're discovering that that's, that's really not the case. And uh, the Department of Defense has, you know, caught up and, and, and come up to date with that. Um, and on July 13th of 2015, there was a statement by the Department of Defense uh, saying that they were going to lift the ban on um, service by transgender individuals, starting by uh, no longer separating trans people who are serving, um, which means like you could get discharged if you uh, came out, you know. Um, so they they decided they're going to stop separating people for uh, serving openly, and then um, they also at that time put together a six month working group to come up with new policies and standards for current service members and also um, in order to open up um, enlisting to new recruits. So that was in July of last year, which means that it's been about six months. The uh, That group should be wrapping up their work sometime this month. Um, and the new policies are expected to go into effect pretty rapidly uh, and uh, should take place uh, sometime this year. So sometime, hopefully, the, the kind of guess from people I've talked to is that hopefully it'll be sometime this spring that um, they'll actually be able to open up enlistment to transgender individuals. Uh, this is, it's super exciting. It's a really... Um, it's kind of like late in the game, you know, but that's okay. A lot of corporations and stuff are only starting to renew their policies now. Um, it, it makes sense that the um, the military is, is starting to, you know, move forward on this now. It's it's super exciting. Um, I'm, I'm really eagerly anticipating, you know, the announcement of the new policies. I, I'm talking to a couple of people. Um, including one person who's actually involved, has been involved a little bit with um, that group, and it looks like the new policies are going to be really inclusive. Um, and, you know, I shared this information with, you know, a GORUCK team that I was working with in November. We were doing a, a Veterans Day event, and um, I used it as an opportunity to come out. I shared the story of this person I know who's who's working with this group who has transitioned while on active duty which is um, pretty momentous you know um, was pretty dangerous when he did it because the ban had not yet been lifted and he was in danger of separation and um, you know the the cadre in charge of the event is an active duty marine you know and I was really nervous to talk about it in front of somebody that's you know in the service and everything because it's not something that they're used to and it might have been a you know might have been a big deal for him and I mean he was he was great he was like this is this is great it's 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 about time you know that they got rid of these irre irre irrelevant policies uh, it doesn't matter what a person's orientation or their gender identity is as long as they're willing to do the right thing when the time comes you know and it was a really great moment for me. Uh, I felt really supported, you know, and my team was really great. They came up to me, they, you know, they were like, you know, um, very supportive about the fact that I had come out 
as trans because they just all thought that I was a cis male. Um, and a lot of people asked a lot of questions about like, you know, what does that mean and, and who will be able to, to step up? And they were equally excited that, you know, this opportunity is opening up to, you know, all Americans, really, you know. Um, there's there's no reason that somebody shouldn't be able to serve their country just based on, you know, how they view their own comfort with their body, you know, and their gender identity. There's no reason that somebody should have to stay in the closet and serve as their birth gender, which is torturous, you know. Um, and it's it's a really exciting thing to see that people who want to step up will now be able to step up. So I'm really excited about it. I'm really excited to um, to see those policies and to see, you know, um, the military moving forward. I'll be, um, I'll definitely be, you know, keeping track of this with, like, extreme interest. Um, and, and yeah, um, we'll see where it goes and we'll see how it goes. Uh, we'll see how people, you know, how that first wave of people are, um, I don't want to say treated. I don't think they're going to be treated poorly. I don't, you know, I don't want to say, like, oh, there's going to be, like, this wave of, like, hazing or anything like that or, or whatever. But, you know, it is going to be a, a brand new thing, you know, and people are going to be that first wave of people going through it, you know. Um, and so I'm excited for them. I'm excited to, to see it happen. And, uh, yeah, we'll we'll touch base on that in the future. I'll, we'll see how it goes you know I'll probably do a follow-up video to this video when that time comes you know as I as I'm tracking the, this progress uh, in the meantime guys thanks for thanks for listening um, I'll probably share this video to both life of team and and my personal channel because it is a very personal video for me and then um, I'm also gonna share several links including the link to the statement um, that was, you know, released by the Department of Defense, so that you can read that. It's worded really, really nicely. Um, I will also share with you a video um, with Logan in it, who's uh, the first person to openly transition while on active duty, which again was very dangerous for him to do because the ban hadn't been lifted at that time. And um, I'm going to go ahead and also share a link to GORUCK with you in case that sounds interesting to you. So look below for a bunch of links and um, yeah, get excited. This is a really exciting time. Thanks for listening guys and I'll see you next week.